When exploring the city of Skingrad's stony streets, we see a familiar alchemical symbol adorning the sign of a shop named All Things Alchemical. Once inside, we see a lone dark elf proprietor behind the counter, and asking her name, she sullenly greets. Me? I'm Falanu. How's Lalu? As if that matters here. Well, you're a long way from home. I assume Prophet's brought you to Skingrad, if you're representing House Lalu. I'm the only alchemist in Skingrad. Not much business here, but I can't go back to Morrowind. It's just like anywhere else in the Empire. By the way, do you happen to know what the fine is here in Cyrodiil for necrophilia? Just asking. Stunned, we can reply. Ah, uh, excuse me? What? Oh, nothing. I was just wondering. Or, I have no idea. Thanks anyway. And finally, I hate to ask, but is it the first offense? Let's assume... no. Well, then it's at least 500 gold. That's nothing compared to Morrowind, thanks. As a quick aside, I've covered Flanu Halalu's infamous necrophilia, including her first burnt-down establishment and nightly visits to the graveyard in Cyrodiil. Plus, being one of the most memorable moments in Oblivion, again, the great Young Scrolls has made a phenomenally catchy song out of her misadventures. Both videos are linked at the end of this one. What's the fine for necrophilia in this part of Tamriel? Back to Falano, though. Seeing as she's not exactly afraid of the taboo underbelly of society, we can probe with previously inaccessible dialogue once we've read Modern Heretics, asking, Say, you haven't seen any Daedra shrines nearby, perchance? Makes you think I'd know anything about that. I don't know, necrophilia, maybe. But it just so happens I've run into some sanguine worshippers up in the Imperial Reserve, a long way north-northwest of Skingrad. Can't give you any better directions, unfortunately. Travelled mostly at night with a guide and didn't see much on the way. Good day. Another way to learn about Sanguine Shrine is visiting Skingrad's Fighters Guild and seeking out Fatus Calidius interrupting perhaps the most relatable of Oblivion dialogue to date. Well met. How goes it? Fantastic. Thanks for asking. I love walking by Salmo's place. The smell of his bread baking is amazing. I could eat nothing but Salmo's baking for the rest of my life. That'd be fine with me. Taking an immediate break from our quest, we then hunt down Salmo's infamous bakery, taking a lungful of the intoxicating smell of baked goods. We then ask the grubbly dressed Altma for a sweet roll and he lights up. A sweet roll? But of course, Salmo is famous for his sweet rolls. One taste and you are in heaven. On top of the world, yes? I could never leave Skingrad. All my good friends here would die without my sweet rolls. The rest of the world must suffer as best it can without me. Man, that Salmo was not kidding. These sweet rolls are to die for. Eating exactly 47 of the sweet treats, we return to the Fighters Guild basement and Fattis greets. I'm in the Fighters Guild, yes. And I can train for weapon and shield parries. Fattis Calidius is the name. What brings you to Skingrad? Hunting goblins? Sure, they're thick in the West Weald, but you'll find their holes all over Cyrodiil. Actually, I was hunting something a little more elusive daedra shrines and i hear you're the man to speak to yes in fact up in the imperial reserve a long way north northwest of skingrad i came upon a sanguine shrine gave it a wide berth i'm a goblin hunter don't want to tangle with those daedra worshippers bye heading to the shrine northwest of the city under the guise of night we find in a small clearing a statue of a stout demon with jewel horns sporting a drinking mug and its foot resting atop a humanoid skull. The acolytes seeing us approach loiter awkwardly as if we'd interrupted a clandestine celebration and the nearby Khajiit commoner then greets. I joined for the parties and stayed for the parties. Why would I go back to work? That life is for suckers and fools. Fools. She then commences praying to apparently the nearby party deity. 
a seated Altman to our left, Foreign Thiel, then questions. It all feels good. It's all fun. Why not? And the Bosma priest with his back to us, Engorm, then expands. Have you come to revel in the glory that is the Shrine of Sanguine? What do you do here exactly that is shunned by civil society? It is a place of celebration for us. We dance, we make love. Would you speak with Sanguine? We then have two options being. No, I will not sully my morals and speak to Sanguine. And especially not if I have to join your sex party, you filthy Bosma bastard. Of course you won't. Go on about your dreary existence. The Lord Sanguine has no interest in one such as yourself. Otherwise... Beers, babes, and bald bosmas. Count me in. Approach then, and bring Sanguine a gift. Some cyrodelic brandy is an appropriate gift for your host. Do not test his patience. Our quest then updates. The followers of Sanguine have told me that in order to summon the Daedra, I will need to leave an offering of cyrodelic brandy at the statue, and you must be level 8 to begin this quest. Luckily for us, we had acquired the expensive liquor previously, as Cyrodelic brandy is located throughout Cyrodiil and can be commonly found in many nobles' houses, or in our case, it can also be bought at the main ingredient. Let's do business. That's a good deal. Goodbye. Back at the shrine, Forenthil reiterates. You have been told how to summon Sanguine. If you feel worthy, proceed. And if we don't? You better have the right offering or you're wasting your time here. You stand on holy ground. Ashney then complains of the worshippers' persecution. We threaten no one. Why can't they just leave us alone? Remember, this place is sacred. Approaching the shrine to Sanguine, we decide to give up the offering. And the Daedra responds. Ah, uh, another mortal. Come to beg Sanguine to add a bit of spice to an otherwise drab existence. I would have you perform a service for me. The Castle Leowin is a dull, dreary place. The mistress is an especially somber soul, and tomorrow she will hold another excruciating dinner party. I want you to liven it up. Use this spell on the Countess and her guests. I think it will make the party much more interesting. You should probably try to be inconspicuous, or they might kill you. Oh, and the party is by invitation only. You'll have to find a way in. Have fun. As we turn to leave, Engorm then spurs on. Dangwin has set you to a task. Do what you must, so we may drink to your success. Go then. Our quest then updates. After I provided the offering to Sanguine, the Daedric Prince spoke to me. Sanguine believes that the Countess of Leowen is too stuffy and wants me to do something about it. She will be hosting a dinner party tomorrow and I am to sneak into the castle undetected and cast the spell of stark reality on her. Though, what exactly this spell of stark reality does, and how it is intended to alleviate the Countess's stuffiness, remains a mystery for now. We then head straight to the southern castle of Leowen, although it should be noted there's actually no time limit on this quest. Entering the main hall, we spy the seated dignitaries being Count Caro and his young bride, whose evening we've been tasked with ruining. Fine greetings to you. Yes. Now, as a quick aside, seeing the regal Countess Alessia Caro, if one was to have a pang of guilt at wrecking her party and terrorising her guests, we have actually learned in the past of her less favourable attributes, which I'll briefly break down because the writing here is so good, although the other nobles of Cyrodiil can be heard openly gushing. Alessia Caro visits her mother in Coral regularly. A dutiful daughter. And a dutiful wife, I hear. There's been trouble with smugglers and Khajiit bandits in the trans -Nibbon. But Marius Caro is taking steps to deal with the problem. When you approach Alessia for the first time, provided that you're not Argonian, she will give you a friendly greeting. Welcome to Leowin. I'm Alessia Caro. 
and I have the honour to be the wife of the Count, Marius Caro. And while Alessia's mother, Ariana Valga, is the famously fair and widowed ruler of Coral, who employs Nords despite her husband being slain in battle against Nord clansmen in Skyrim, Alessia has found the common beast folk in Leowen to be a burden, and if you approach her as an Argonian, she will subtly hint at her dislike of beast races. I am Countess Alicia Caro, wife to Count Marius. I think Leowen would be better off if we removed all the dirty Argonians such as yourself. You wouldn't have a problem with that, would you? No matter what, when asked about Leowen, she will reveal her political stance and tell you about her attempt to imperialise the region. In these difficult times, we must count on persons such as you to secure our borders from bandits and rabble-rousers. We all profit by your lawful pursuit of the unlawful, and we encourage you to attack, burn, loot and destroy them wherever you can. Inside the castle, Alessia's right hand, Ladara Mothril, will let you in on the state of the county. Leowen is in a state of transition. It has long been a respected county, making moderate cultural and economic contributions to the empire. However, Leowen must move toward the mainstream of imperial culture, both in trade and in political affairs. This point of view worries Count Marius' chief advisor, Onstea Sundu, to no end. Onstea Sundu, Castle Leowen's steward and chief advisor to Count Marius Caro, in theory. Leowen has always been a melting pot of races and cultures. Of course, racial and cultural conflicts produce inefficiencies and confusion. I fear Lady Leowen and Ladara Mothril plan to push the minorities aside and establish a bland imperial-dominated culture here in Leowen. Savi, the Gajid Castle Mage, agrees with Onstea and proclaims, Savi, Count's Mage and Castle Healer, your servant. I have been happy enough in the Count's service, but I am not so happy about his lovely wife and her Nibbanean advisor. Lady Alicia is uncomfortable with Khajiit ways, and Argonian ways, and Dunmer ways. She is only comfortable with pure white-bred Nibbanians. During the Thieves' Guild questline, we received unsettling information about what actually transpires in the bowels of Castle Leowen. After talking to the imprisoned freelance thief Amuse, local beggars D the Scalawag, and rancid Radirsha will hint at the secrets of the castle. I've heard of a hidden torture chamber. They say that Count Marius interrogates Argonian immigrants from Black Marsh. The servants whisper that the Argonians are dragged into the basement and never seen again. While this suggests that Alessia's husband goes to extreme measures against beast races, talking to Ladara Mothril will reveal that the couple tortures the Argonians together. Shh! It's dangerous to be heard talking about that! The Countess has a secret passage somewhere in the basement that leads to her private quarters. That's where the torture chamber is. Sometimes I can hear the screams of the prisoners when I'm in my chambers. So now that we have the measure of the Countess and her refined tastes, it's time we visit Alessia at her dinner party as instructed. As we enter the main hall and head to a door to the right into the dining hall, we bump into none other than Alessia gossiping, including a small tidbit about our prior elimination in service of the Dark Brotherhood. How can I help you? Rats? They've got fighters guild people out killing rats? You're kidding, right? Oh, how horrible. You know Kalia Draconis? That nice watch officer stationed at the castle? She's been murdered. It can't be. Good day. Attempting to enter the dining hall after the Countess, the guard bars our path, warning. Hi there. Hold on. There's a dinner party here tonight. No one gets into the room until it's prepared. And no one gets in the room, even after it's prepared, unless they're on the list. And even if they're on the list, they'd better be dressed for it. This is important to the Countess, and no one is going to muck it up. Got it? Waiting until after 8pm and approaching the guard again in our iron armor, he questions. Well met. What are you doing here? 
You don't look like one of the party guests. I don't remember you on the list. It's me, Dash. Here for the dinner party? Look, it's a fancy party. You seem a fine enough sort, but not so nice as I'm going to just let you in there. <laughs> At least not dressed like that. Refused based on our standing and presumably attire, we then have two options. The first is to befriend right. the guard, raising his disposition if over 70 me, and asking thanks. for an invitation, he will relent. Hmm. Don't know that you're dressed for it, but you seem like a really likable sort. I'll let you in. I'd better not regret this. Good day. Our second option is to return in noble's fineries, dressing so slick, even the countess will pop her head out to flirt. You've got some nimble fingers. What have you been getting into? Just a loose brazier or two. Unless you're smitten with our smutty ways, no doubt reminding her of her husband, stands approvingly as we explain to the guard. Back, you common jailer. I'm here to enjoy the scrumptious goods on offer. And perhaps the food. <laughs> I don't know who you are, and I'm not all that sure about you. But you're dressed for it. Can't imagine dressing up for any other reason. Go on in. Bye. Well met. With our deception successful, we step inside the dining hall and hear the upper class gossip among themselves. Hello. What's the latest? When Sedrasa isn't teaching alchemy, he spends all of his time researching a cure for skooma addiction. I've heard he never leaves his laboratory. He's certainly dedicated to his craft. So I've heard. I'm not sure the Dark Brotherhood is any more serious a problem than beggary and petty thievery. And it's certainly a discreet and secret problem. Oh. Before we get seated for the fun, it should be noted four nobles other than the Countess have to be present for the quest to be successful, being the High Elf Termanwi and Vlamil Aureus. Unfortunately for me, Imperials Britta and Jaris Inville never showed up in my game. So in desperation, I actually teleported to them thanks to the console and found the Imperial couple in this bizarre limbo replica of this section of the castle until the quest begins. However, once the bug is fixed, we can take our seats at the table and explore the two options of success or failure for the quest. First, exploring success, we get up from the table nonchalantly and hurl the unknown spell in the middle of the guests to hear a cacophony of screams from our victims. Attempting to hide behind a pillar, we're caught by the guard. Stop! You violated the law! Since you lack the funds to pay the court, you must now serve out your sentence. Your stolen goods are now forfeit. Looking down to bribe the guard, we see we two are naked and limply ask, can't we just forgive and forget? Then pay with your blood! The party goers then descend on us. Stay away! And we leap over the table, bounding out of the room and dash down the hallway. The guards outside, just as vigilant, and the rain stinging our cheeks. Just outside the northern gate, we then abscond with a white horse and dive into the river as our quest updates. I've succeeded in casting the stark reality spell on the Countess of Leowen and her company. I should return to the Shrine of Sanguine, but before we visit the shrine, what happens if we instead fail the quest? Well, when casting the spell, we can miss a vital portion of the How guests. How can I help you? Oh, rats for the new associates. Is it some initiation no! test or something? Absolutely not. What's the news from the other parts of Tamriel? Nothing I'd like to talk Stay about. Stay away! These What's going on? Guys? There's assault, a psychopath assault. on the loose! Assault! Ah! This ends here! Ah. Being found out, we similarly escape the obscene scene. However, as soon as we exit the castle, our quest would have instead updated. I failed to affect all the guests with the Stark Reality spell. The spell has worn off and my items have been returned to me, but I have failed my quest for Sanguine. Similarly, we could return to the Shrine of Sanguine, but see his container is locked to us, and neither his followers nor the Daedra deign to acknowledge us afterwards.
If we instead had succeeded in our rude and nude party trick, the Lord of Revelry would congratulate. Success, mortal. And it appears you joined in the festivities as well. Good for you. You need to lighten up a bit. You'll find your equipment in that chest over there. And here's a little something for your efforts. Maybe we'll celebrate again sometime. Our quest would then update. Sanguine was pleased with my efforts. He's given me the Sanguine Rose as a reward. I may retrieve my belongings in the nearby chest. Checking the chest, we indeed find our belongings have miraculously been transported there. Plus, the Sanguine Rose appears in our inventory. A stuff that looks to be made into a rose at the top, with thorns lining the shaft. Now, before we test out said staff, another fun fact is, there is a special edition of the Black Horse Courier which accompanies this quest that can only be found in a few places in Leowen, including two copies in the dungeon post-quest, that reads, Special Edition, Dinner Party Marred by Prankster. Countess Alessia Caro is a lady of great beauty, wit, and grace. Her face is known throughout Cyrodiil, unfortunately. Thanks to one deviant prankster, the rest of her has become known to a good deal of her castle staff as well. During what started as a formal dinner party for some close friends of the Countess, an unknown assailant cast a spell that affected all who attended. Though it did no physical damage, it certainly left a lasting impression. The Countess and all of her invited guests suddenly found themselves all together in the All Together. The spell apparently stripped everyone affected of all their possessions, including the clothes on their backs. From all reports, the frightened guests handled the situation calmly, maintaining proper decorum at all times. Everybody was acting like ladies and gentlemen, said one palace staffer who asked not to be identified. I don't think they was trying to sneak no glances at anyone's naughty bits. As to the identity of the assailant, Castle guards have remained silent. Some reports maintain that the culprit was apprehended at the scene. Others claim that he was able to escape without detection. One witness even claims that the assailant was affected by his own spell and fled this scene in haste when he realized he too had been a victim. Whatever the case, Castle security has been on high alert since the incident. It is not known as of press time whether Countess Caro has any dinner parties planned in the near future. Testing out our staff of Sanguine before we exit the clearing, Engorm congratulates. Sanguine is pleased. It is reason to celebrate. Reach for glory, Rosebearer. And we see the group standing over a fresh kill, wondering what type of debauchery they wish to perform on this poor deceased mountain lion. But instead, we test the rose as it can summon a random Daedra who attacks the person or creature targeted by the spell, and the spell must hit a person or creature in order to work. The summon may be any type of Daedra, and although it only spawns a Daedra for 20 seconds, that is plenty of time to party. Oh, my crab's more fearsome than you. Wait a minute, let me do that one again. What's the fine for necrophilia in this part of Tamriel? What's the fine for necrophilia in this part of Tamriel? 